think that if prog is bullshit, and that's what this podcast is about, that this podcast is just about talking shit? Yeah, well, yeah, we're talking shit, though. About <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> yeah, thank would you, you to bunch you, of folks. Would you say that the <laughs> Alien Covenant soundtrack is progressive? Uh, it progresses. I would say Anything's that. progressive. Yeah, I mean, when it, when it's <laughs> progressive movie, is such a subjective uh, word. Like anything yeah, is so, really progressive. If you say prog, like that, pretty much nowadays just means like progressive side trance, which is just like a genre within itself. Progressive side trance. Yeah. yeah. There's so many progressive things as well. Like it's. Yeah, progressive. I think it pretty much just means like rather than like you know how like some genres like drum and bass and hardstyle and stuff, it'll have a build up that's like stuff like builds up to something high and then ends high and that that's like the drop that's yeah, high yeah. rather than that it's like a progressive build up of layers that build up and up and up to a climax and then drop off and build up and up and up over and over and working on itself that's why i find like a lot of film music really interesting because it goes like they have to find the balance between being captivating and engaging and not overdoing it and not making that the main focus you yeah. start you start small get yeah, bigger bigger, yeah. bigger bigger over time you progress on the same idea but you just add layers but that's yeah. how i can show you some music that's definitely not progressive <laughs> yeah i find that with breaking through with things it needs society needs slow progression Hi everyone, hello, we are in Goulburn, episode 3 special edition, warehouse edition. So we're gonna go inside and uh, meet the guys. Hi brother, it's been a while, huh? Hello everybody, this is uh, Solid Professor Music, Progress Bullshit Podcast, uh, episode 3, also special warehouse edition. Uh, well, uh, guys, firstly, congratulations on finishing your, your project. Let, let's, let's have a let, let's cheers. Have a cheers. Oh, yes. Yes. yes, we'll, we'll talk about the project a bit later. Let's, um, well... Um, of uh, JJ, good to see you, Tyler. Nice to meet you. First, uh, can you introduce yourselves, like the, the sort of the companies that, that you represent? <laughs> suppose. Oh, I'm Ove. Um, I'm a one-man army, and I work for myself, I suppose. And I'm a bit of Justin's, <laughs> Justin's bitch every now and then, I suppose. So she slaps me <laughs> dynamic <laughs> audiovisual, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm a dynamic bitch. You know, I can't pull myself out a little bit. You know. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm Justin. I work for O. <laughs> <laughs> and what company That's do you represent? Trip. Yeah, Dynamic Audiovisual. And um, yeah, we're at the warehouse today, having a little podcast session. Um, nice. Do you guys have a um, a PowerPoint? I'm just thinking that because we have uh, the lights connected to the same power source as this, just hearing a bit of like interference. Yeah, um, we've got power over here. Right there. Should uh, I grab an extension for you? Uh, uh, yeah, well, or, or Liam. You, but I don't know if it works. Nah, it's not plugged in. Maybe, maybe Liam can, can do it so that we don't have to get up. Well, we just need to plug it in. Oh, I can do it. Anyway, I see it. I'll do it. William could get us an extension. You know where the oh, extensions yeah, are, right? Where's the extension? Yeah. Actually, I got it. Like day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> this is just every day at the warehouse. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. We'll just rummage around for that one little thing. So, oh, yeah. It, 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 How'd you go? It, it would be. Well, I didn't go. I just, I'm here still. <laughs> um, so, shall t- Tyler introduce himself? You, Tyler, Tyler, please introduce yourself. Yeah, no, sorry. I guess, sure. Um, I'm Tyler, I represent Busy Motors Interactive. We do everything that encompasses 3D design pretty much. So, yeah, anything from stage designs, game design, interactive displays, you name it. So, uh, what are you doing here at the Dynamic Audiovisual uh, Warehouse and what are you guys working on? Uh, I've been working on a duo project with Dynamic Audiovisual, doing an installation for Canberra Council. Um, one of the councils in Canberra doing like a 
big insta metal installation of animal artworks with LEDs that trigger off platforms for a uh, yeah, interactive semi-permanent display. Interactive Christmas experience. Yeah. Interactive. And, Multimedia. Uh, yeah. Interactive Christmas. It's, ex it's exciting. But, um, yeah. So, as I understand, this is pretty much the completion of the project. You, you've got to be submitting Some. it. To the it gets installed. We go this, install this it coming now. Week, so, yeah. Been building for a couple of weeks now, getting it all prepped, doing all the technology and stuff, and now it's sorted. The install starts, and then after a couple of days, it'll be done. So when can people? What day can people actually see it? Probably say Thursday, this this coming Thursday. Um, which was that like twenty fifth ish? Yeah. Power turns on somewhere between twenty third and twenty fifth. They'll be seeing action happening. Yeah. Might be a bit delayed from the rain potentially, but we'll see. So after this podcast is released, yes. Yeah. What well, after celebrating? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I don't think after this podcast is released. Uh, it might be. be I, I wanna wanna do it properly, so it takes time. You know, I'm a, I'm a one uh, man band, so it it's gonna take time. So how long have you guys been working on on this project? Out here at the warehouse, we've been here for about three and a half weeks, I think, roughly. Um, yeah. Before then, it was even like another month or so, I think. Um, just probably like a two month turnaround. Yeah, doing all the prep and then um, getting all the materials here, coming back and forth from Sydney and doing the builds throughout the weeks. Yeah. Um, what yeah, what about uh, in terms of the your music related uh, projects? Um, anything sort of happening? I know you are, uh, you know, ready for tomorrow. You got a gig uh, off. Oh, if only they'd let me do my amateur hour on the decks. I've had mm. maybe a combined total of eight hours on some decks. Um, I just, I just hum and do blend in with the music. I'm part of all the music that plays. That's my musical input. Yeah. And then I give requests. You know, obviously Katy Perry, instrument? Katy Perry, and Rebecca Black. What's your musical? <laughs> all the big ones. <laughs> all, the, all the good stuff. Yeah. You know? the stuff you um, need I make sure that I get the music <laughs> really going. What instrument yeah. did you play? <laughs> Rebecca oh, Black is pretty well liked. My instrument. Yeah, that's oh, very progressive. Know. I think. Yeah. <laughs> 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 as progressive as they fucking go. <laughs> And um, uh, in terms of the music related projects, I mean, in terms of creating uh, something, I, I know Tyler, your company does uh, stage designs and all that. Can, can you maybe talk about that a bit? And what, what's yeah. currently, what sort of music related projects? Uh, yeah, I mean, like we do a lot of interactive displays with um, festivals for like stages and stuff. So a lot of the stuff we'll do will be taking audio feeds from a DJ set and then making visuals that match those feeds. Um, whether it be like, you know, linking it to certain frequencies of the sound to play certain tracks and give it a story, or whether it's like done with time code so it actually syncs perfectly with the with the music. Um, yeah, like a lot of the stuff we do as well, like we do a lot of game design and stuff like that that incorporates a lot of sound and um, visual uh, sound effects and um, yeah, music effects in it as well and soundtracks. So you're we're constantly doing that, like atmospheric sound design sort of stuff. Audio yeah. design. Yeah, so yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I've always I've always been like very very interested in like yeah ambient atmospheric sound design, sort of like um, sci-fi film music that sort of stuff. So yeah. what were you we listening to before? Alien Covenant soundtrack. Oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's, orchestral. Who that? I can't even remember. Uh, Jeff, someone or Jim, someone? Uh, oh, whole orchestra. orchestra. Yeah, a, lo a lot of it's actually digital synthesis as well. Like there's yeah. there's parts that are like the chill, ambient, like emotional parts that are all like symphony orchestra. And then once it gets into the horrific shit, it starts doing like really ambient bass with like they do this really interesting stuff where they get like the sound of a flute and like add a buckload of reverb to it and just sort of like fade it in and out in areas. And it's like the motif that follows the alien throughout the film. It's, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. How long have you been doing uh, th this stuff? It's been about four, four or five years now. Like slowly progressing through it. Yeah. Um, Learning each bit of the trade slowly, mastering. Yeah, it's it all time, it's all constantly changing. Like originally when I started out, and my my long term goal is still to do um, visual effects for film and cinema, but um. Yeah, it, like it's constantly adapting to new things that sort of like are just steps along that road as well. Um, when I first started doing all this stuff, it was literally because I bought like a little hologram display and 
Mm. I couldn't be fucked paying for content for it because like to buy visual content is like no. 50 bucks for a 10 second clip and I was just like fuck that I'll Damn. just learn how to do it myself and then <laughs> when I started learning how to do it I was like oh this is actually pretty fucking pretty yeah, interesting like the fans mm. that spin and that yeah. Like yeah, totally. yeah. Oh, yeah that's cool so, what about uh, Liam is he sorry guys um, is he getting us uh, the, the, the the extension cord uh, <laughs> this, this, this he's bloody so slack uh, he's trying uh, to get the, out of it this bloody uh, you know noise <laughs> is annoying i tell you that you can't you can't hear it right? but uh, it's bugging me i can't uh, we gotta get it fixed uh. <laughs> the moment we get the drinks out he's like yep i'm out all right they're, they're resting i'm just gonna go eat all that pizza on my own <laughs> Uh, oh, you have been, you know, into the visual stuff for a, for a long time. Um, how, right long, how long? How long? When what? Uh, what got it? Got you started or, or interested? In oh, it? how long oh. into vision stuff? Mm -hmm. I've loved it since forever. Even when I was young, just watching movies and everything. Like I love the vision aspect. Um, like I think maybe in year seven when I was like 12, 13, oh, I started oh, getting pizza. into like the Photoshop. Oh, yums. Um, and just, just getting really passionate in like visual design ever since like 12, 13. And that was like Photoshop, then went into a bit of like video effects, then like kind of slowly went into events, like drip feeding that when I left school. And then I just got really into the lights. So I just love it. Like, so that's interesting. Like I was always a musical mind growing yeah. up and I still am like a music runs in my family, but visual arts doesn't run in my family. And I never considered myself to be like I've always been horrible at sketching and painting and any sort of visual creative arts I was always shit at but now a lot of the stuff we do is visually based and it's a weird like conflict for me as well because yeah I feel like music's probably something that I'd probably do better at creatively. Mm. There's a juxtaposition between the two things like mm. they're very different but they both come together really yeah, similarly. You surprise yourself when you make good digital art like because you couldn't draw it? Like... Yeah but also I find the majority of the good stuff that comes out is mistakes. Oh, it's when you like screw something up and you're like, oh, that actually works in a really interesting way and you adapt on that, it ends up working way better. Is it can, you like connect, can you connect it? Has that progressed in 3D, like, I don't know my graffiti style? To run it from there, because I'll be able to see it a bit better. 100%. Right? That's one thing I noticed with, with that was like, I used to graph heaps when I was younger, like my dad always really pushed being like creative and stuff like that, even though he comes from like medicine and stuff, he always pushed creative arts and I used to graph heaps and like just do heaps of like, you know, big mural pieces and stuff, but I never really took into account like light, depth, angle of composition, focal points, like... I've tried, I just didn't have the eye like my friends on... Yeah. People have it, you know, like, yeah, I think a true artist can just see that stuff. Yeah, but there's even things that you don't realise. You can learn technique, that, like, like, you can learn how Yeah, you can learn it. technique and, and you can stuff, learn it really good, but, like, to really have an eye for it, like, and I think that's where, like, I feel like learning 3D and, like, modelling and stuff like that, once you start to really know everything, you know, you've built it from scratch. Yeah, 100%. You can see like that. I think and it, you start it, to see like that a bit more. Especially yeah. like 3D rendering and stuff. Like you, t you get a whole different aspect of things. Like I never took into account even like cinematography, how that works within its own language in visual arts. Like, you know, just, just from cinema from the last hundred years, we have our own language of how we view angles and stuff like that, and view certain shots and it creates certain emotions. And even like different apertures and focal depths of the camera really change what an emotion and tone is for an image and that's that like sort of stuff. The background's really blurry. Yeah. So like that's like a wedding photo sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Zooming in and out like while changing like the ISO. Yeah, like I, I, I didn't do I didn't do graph for years and then two D statics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I didn't do graph for years and then I went back I think after like three or so years of doing three D stuff and I was just like, man, this is like this makes so much more sense. Like how the light is dispersed through a scene. Like how it should look part realistically. Of that is 3D is like the placement of the camera and understanding like lighting is just such a big. That's the hardest of, part of it, but yeah. yeah, it's it's one of the most crucial parts because it's, it's the language of cinema that really evoke emotes tone in those sorts of images. That's just yeah, really hard to get. So how, how do you think that the the sound aspect of it creates emotion alongside the light? Like I know that like say like red light makes a different emotion to blue light that like sound wise 
you know, do you think like more dramatic bassy sounds would go better with I think like, it's the, certain colours? I think it's the same thing with like cinema in the way that like it's it's a language that we've adapted to ourselves that we've created. Like mm -hmm. for example, like major major keys uh, like normally generally happy emotions and minor keys are generally sad, but that's only because we've denoted them to be that. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, and it's just the language of music that we sort of listen to. So that's why I find like a lot of film music really interesting because it goes like they have to find the balance between being captivating and engaging and not overdoing it and not making that the main focus. And you can tell when you listen to a film, you, like watch a film, you listen to the music and you're like, oh, that's too much. Like yeah. it's distracting from the actual storytelling. Yes, yes, yes. That's, yeah. that's a real skill to have. Yeah, it's it's very difficult. Similar with game music design, actually, it's it's very tricky to yeah find that right balance of like where certain triggers hit and stuff yes. like that. Like with video editing now, I'm noticing also that oh, we noticed in some of my earlier videos that uh, oh I could have done here so much smoother. Like this is KS2, yeah, uh, but I, I just. I guess didn't have the skill or didn't notice. Now I'm starting to notice, and you know. Yeah, for sure, and that's the, that's part of like becoming professional with things. You like, I remember when I started motion graphics. I think like six months into it, I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to get a fucking big paying job and do cinema and all that stuff. And I was like applying for jobs and stuff. Now I'm five years down the track, and I know so much more than I did. And I look at it, I'm like, I'm definitely not ready yet. Like yeah. there's, there's still a fuckload to learn. And that's what happens when you start learning things better is you realize how little you know about things. Yeah, and then there's things like uh, what kind of equipment you're using because that, that affects the other. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah. you're more passionate, there's more doors open and you start realizing there's so much you can learn about it. Yeah, 100%. And it's, 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 more and yeah, like exactly. you don't realize that how skilled up you've become, I think, as you go. Mm. Like you sort of, you're saying that now, but really, like you said, you've come so far as well. Like, yeah. You know, you would be able to do those jobs, but it's just... Yeah. Like as you go, you sort of yeah, hundred percent. You've got more to learn. Like There's, Noel said, you gotta you sort of have to have the daily updates with this sort of stuff. 100%. People want to know what's happening now. You know, not only just for like that sake, but also like keeping your body in check with like the flow of that certain work. Because like, for example, that like film visual effects is something I've always wanted to do, but I haven't done it properly, like consistently daily for like over a year now because we've been doing other work game design stuff mostly and when I go back to that it's so tricky to get back in the flow because my mindset is still in like no don't look good like run quick which is like a completely different ballpark between cinema visual effects and game visual effects mm. so, yeah. and uh, you said Tyler that music is still your kind of like connection that you like what sort what how do you combine your you know your passion love for music with the visual stuff that you do like um, I listen to music like all day every day pretty much like i've i've a <laughs> jj will tell you i got a fucking very fucking yeah. broad and spastic um taste in music it goes yeah, to like vast, every like, and so how much well, erratic changes in music styles <laughs> i would say yeah which yeah. is good uh at some time but other times can be quite stressful it's stressful when he was trying to cut vinyl last night and it was playing like alien covenant like the death scenes like oh everything's good it's all like really jazzy or something everything's good and it's just like really horrific <laughs> well we're talking about pleasures and minors before i guess that that's that that's what it is uh. focus By the way, um, <clears throat> what do you think about the gin? That's uh, thanks to it's Poncho Fox. I, I love Poncho With Fox. Poncho yeah. I would purchase it. Yeah. 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 Irrelevant of the price, I would purchase uh, it. And yeah. I, I recommend Poncho anyone Fox. to do so. Uh, yeah, would thank you, you to Poncho you, Fox. Would you say that the <laughs> Alien Covenant soundtrack is progressive? Uh, it progresses. I would say Anything's that progressive. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> progressive is such a subjective is, uh, word. Like anything yeah, is really progressive. You know, I, perhaps this it opportunity. Changes, you know, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. a well, progression exactly. from like from that. That's why I'm puzzled, guys. What the fuck is progressive? I mean, to me, all, all music Bullshit. is progressive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, and then, like, yeah. Oh, like I, I hear people telling me progressive is prog is between techno and trance. <laughs> So Have you heard that? In between, so, yeah. The it's, so there's like, there's it's, also progressive house, progressive rock, all sorts of different things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, what the f is it then? So, <laughs> I it's like, if you say, oh, prog, like, I love prog, 
then people don't know what the f you're talking about, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you say if you say <laughs> prog, like that, pretty much nowadays just means like progressive side trance, which is just like a genre within itself. Progressive side trance. Yeah. yeah. Our prog or progressive you go trance. To another like community, they well, might have their own kind of prog. Yeah, yeah, well, like, here's the like, progressive house people tell me. What about, uh, what about like it's, it's a fucking Bruce it's its own prog. genre somewhat now. Like it's it really goes beyond everything. But like, like yeah, there's fucking there's so many progressive things as well. Like it's yeah, progressive. I think it pretty much yeah. just means like it, rather than like you know how like some genres like drum and bass and hardstyle and stuff, it'll have a build up that like stuff like builds up to something high and then ends high and that that's like the drop that's yeah, high. Yeah. Rather than that it's like a progressive build up of layers that build up and up and up to a climax and then drop off and build up and up and up over and over. And working on itself. Yeah, but it, isn't, yeah, isn't it so like keeping consistent highs and yeah. then like having a big up and a big down, you've just got something building over itself. Like, but isn't it like most of most of the music yeah it, well most of I mean, you yeah. start you start small, get yeah, bigger, bigger, yeah. bigger, bigger over time. You progress on the same idea, but you just add layers. But that's yeah. how I can the, change the music. There's definitely I mean, no progressing. Yeah, most of the tracks are like techno tracks and bloody house tracks and trance tracks. Are they like that? Are they no, cool. like there's a lot of hard some, trance some stuff that just that. comes in banging and just goes out banging. And yeah. there's no progression. Yeah, it's like a build I'd up. Say, to a I'd say that, like, like, if you've got a list yeah. of a few breakdowns, that's and like, stuff, if you're gonna, like, if that's a bit of progression, build up, build ups, and breakdowns, and <laughs> then you're starting to get into a progressive genre. Whether or not that's a build up, is of there like a genre? House music or techno or psytrance or whatever the fuck you. Yeah. So is it a? It's not a genre then, right? Or it's it's kind of a a, a thing. I think about it's a music. word in English. Yeah. Prog is a genre, progressive is a descriptive word for music, I reckon. I think that's bang on. Prog, but prog, prog is its like own what, genre. What genre? Like what prog what is this? prog would be everything from like progressive techno, progressive house, and progressive psytrance, pretty much. Really? Like you listen to like Zenon Records, that sort of stuff, that's all prog. Oh, Zenon next, you're gonna tell me that about, you know. <laughs> So Zenon invaded prog progressive, right? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think in the early days people used to um, say progressive and they'd be talking about techno. Yeah, for sure. I remember yeah, what I, I never liked progressive um, techno. Like in the early days I just found it really boring. Like it just felt like it just, I don't know, like sort of built up and then just like and then we'll just repeat this yeah. build up and we'll never have a drop like and you just be like yeah. frustrated yeah. by it like, Same like yes. and, and te like techno's that. come mm. a long way it's like, like builds up yeah just, like, I, I actually really do really like progressive yeah. techno there's no like, payoff yeah we love it even you young that's not what you want to, you know, <laughs> enjoy that flavor and you do go back and you you see where they they kind of need the sound too but but I remember years ago, though, like what what they call pro, like prog now, prog trance. Everyone used to just call it like bush prog, pretty much. Like, well, yeah, well, yeah. that's the that's another confusion now. Like you say, if someone says prog, it's something like prog trance. Yeah. Yeah. If someone says prog to me, I pro, I probably associated more with bush prog. Like that, well, that's like, yeah, all there's well, bush prog, prog, which is the bush prog techno. Like it's just bush techno, techno, right? Yeah, but I it mean, still has its own like I don't know. I just used to think of prog as like a, like because bush prog is like. No, no, a lot of those down. Down. Yeah, I like wouldn't it. call that trance like a bush prog techno sort of thing. Like more like you kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. Like basic records and stuff. Like yeah. 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 Trance, yeah. You know, that's prog, bush prog. Yeah. So then it does get confusing for the punter yeah. when people say, "Oh no, it's prog." Even as a so fucking prog what? promoter, <laughs> I'm like. You get on gigs with people and they're like, yeah, we're all prog. I'm like, yeah, cool, no worries. What about these guys? And they're like, no, we're in prog. Exactly, mate. It is pretty broad, though. You get like Zen and Records and then you get like Neelix and stuff, which is like quite different sounding shit, really. But at least Varian is like. I think people just get in their zone and they listen to a certain type of prog and they think that's prog. Yeah, for sure. Same with Psytrance as well. Like, people have different tastes. Would you agree that people use the word prog to kind of say it's cool? It's no. cooler than no, no? Uh, like um, I, I don't know. Or it's more complex. Like I, I've heard a lot. Maybe person. someone that doesn't understand would just say frog because it's easier to just say. Cool. Well, it's just umbrella. Like, you know, I try. <laughs> it's got a nice. Um, I am trying to understand. Kind of like, yeah, what's the music gonna be like? 
Oh, well, I have a bit of prog, and <laughs> probably yeah. some drum and bass. It's sort of like uh, techno, like a lot of people, well, like, it's, it's hard to define what techno is really, yeah. as opposed to house, and like, you know, it, you can differentiate little differences, but a lot of people would definitely get it mixed up. It's got to do with the same thing. I, I think like the, 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 <laughs> you know, the like, or, or the keys, you know, I, I was told, like, one producer was telling me it's all about what key it starts with, you know, it's the, what it is, that's, that, that's what sound. if you just play that genre <laughs> in a different it, key? Is that, just, is that a just, different, just, genres aren't defined by key, anyway. they're defined by timbre. Have, have well, but is that a, is prog a genre? Because if you yeah, say prog could be, uh, house, pro could be. Uh, it's a, it's a genre with subgenres but beneath which, it. So it's like how Psytrance like has. Creature, creature. It's like a creature say, that's fucking flowing through there's, different there's, genres. There's subs of subgenres. That's it's yeah. the inception. It's, it's, it's one of those things that you can add to any <laughs> subgenre. So yeah. you can have like. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah. And you can yeah. probably just yeah. add across oh, the whole. Like, whole yeah, I bet you in the future our kids like, are going to be like, I listen to like deep, mellow, middle tone, upper, ambient bass music that's like a sub, 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 sub. Just like, I just kept popping yeah, because people get more yeah, talented. Like, yeah, exactly. you learn more about it. Like, you're full on, or yeah. Yeah, you, you're darker stuff. Or you, I think it's more daytime stuff. Like, every genre has those different categories yes, within. Yes, and yes. Where, where it just comes in full hard hitting, or if it's but, like... But prog is like... I pretty think much, it comes uh, in... I'm trying to fucking invade all these... I reckon it's partly as well, because, like, throughout, like, history, at least the last century, like, music, when it comes through in certain genres, like rock music, rock and roll, metal, hip hop, as like big genres emerging as new styles. It's had like time to solidify itself and then build a name before all these big artists come through. Because nowadays with the internet and just like mass connectivity and flying everywhere, these genres don't have time to like speed up and gain yeah. traction yes. and get a foot in. Like even nowadays, like all yeah. the genres you hear nowadays, drum and bass, psytrance, hardstyle, all that sort of stuff was made back in the 90s. And they're just adaptations of it, even yeah. like, you know, Dubstep is fucking like what early yeah, 2000s. So some, of, some of them do dig their heels in like dubstep or like trap or yeah. whatever, but they are just like unique and subsidiaries of drum and bass. Yeah. You know? Or you you might have like progressive morning sigh or you know dark sigh or whatever, but they are coming from sigh, sigh friends or whatever. You know, and same with the techno drummers and the house drummers. Yeah. They've all got like a foundation and I have to fit within those realms. Can I ask you? Frog is So, can yeah. I ask you something? Yeah. Um, you said you like hip hop. Do yeah. you like the new mumble shit that's going on? Uh, I. I don't really listen much to like uh, American or Australian hip hop. Um, What's the mumble shit? You know all the new hip hop that's out now. I don't. Is it sound, sound like, like they're uh, fucking uh, zannies? Yes. Like, eh. yes. The thing is, it's happening it's in Russia. I'm more into it's Russian hip hop, but it's happening in Russia Russian exactly. Hip-hop. It is. I've, I've, I've sort of it's done a bit of a. I've done a roundabout with it. Like I've. At first, I was like that because I was just so sort of dug my heels in with my my roots of hip-hop and rap and that that kind of blah, 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 sort of style wasn't there you that know? is like yeah and but like yeah yeah i've come to appreciate like it. Yeah, certain, like it. certain elements of it like depending like it, I, I like because it. there's an art and yes it, and there's trending and yeah yeah it, not, i just like what if that's done well yeah, I exactly. just prefer when artists well. are known for their music and not for how many fucking zannies they do or how many people <laughs> die at a festival. Yeah, like, or one, yeah. The, yeah, one day, yeah, yeah put effort like into like... Behind it. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it's, it's gone beyond like, originally it was like gutter shit coming out like, you know, there was fucking mass socioeconomic problems in America and they were fucking pretty much ghetto reporters like showing the shit that was happening on the streets and breaking through that and stuff. Nowadays it's just fucking entitled rich private yeah. kids. You know why I think it's the internet, that's how. Yeah. You can buy a bit now, anyone can buy a bit. Yeah. Before you had to know I people, mean, you know, yeah. you can't just buy You had to prove yourself yeah. as you an actual like artist. On the street or like, the yeah, whole music no, industry, yeah. mainstream music for the last 20 years has just been fucked. Since like late 90s with like... I don't know, solar I mean, record, not solar record, it was solid when I was growing up. Like, there yeah. were rap battles every weekend. Yeah, and yeah but that's big underground music, I mean. I, I'm yeah. talking about like big mainstream music, you know, yeah. stuff you hear on Main, the radio. Mainstream hip hop um, in, in Australia was pretty solid at the time. It's kind of plummeted a bit over the years, but back then, like, there was yeah, they had big, good artists, hilltop boots and, and shit. There was a lot of festivals too. 
to facilitate that, but these days it's not really like that. Right? I'm just, you know, like realizing now more and more that I don't like understand about like music genres so much, like uh, certain genres. Like I, I, I think any artist doesn't really like being kind of categorized too. Like, yeah, for sure. You know, they like to be kind of putting themselves in a, in a certain zone. I feel like to have a bit of freedom. I feel like the dream as a musician is to create a sound so unique it becomes its own genre. Mm. Like that's those are the real artists that break mm. through those boundaries. Like, 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 like David Bowie's and, like, and Elvis nah, Presley it's, it's and the just, Beatles yeah. and those sorts of people that like Bee Gees, like they create something that they're not only sounds amazing, but like imagine nowadays trying to create some, some sound that's so unique that it sounds different to everything else. And you're so confident within yourself that people will like it that you can yeah. push it out. Like it's you, but you have to be a fucking musical genius have, to do it. I guess you ha you have to be confident that yeah, exactly. whatever that in your music. I yeah, that's, right. that's what any kind of like revelation in music is. It's that the people love it so much that they don't really care and they're not really doing it for the bigger picture. Yeah. At the time, most musical breakthroughs happen just out of the love of the culture of what's happening yeah 100 percent. you know passion. and that's how a lot of the subgenres and stuff get born these days yeah. you know yeah. and we've got a lot of cool stuff coming through but i think hip-hop you know, was the last to, great to one to create something that's totally new now like where music's gone is it's not really i'm an automatic hip -hop was the last you know, great one what, what about noises and side trends man no but like hip-hop this like the struggle of how hip like even like Hip hop's hip hop's very similar to like the blues in the yeah. way that they emerged. Yeah. Like it was a yeah. downtrodden culture of people who didn't just do play music for money. Like they did it to alleviate their emotions and show their emotions and show yeah. what was yeah. really happening in the world. Like to, them. to be a true star in the scene, you had to have the, the story to back it. Yeah, exactly. To, to actually have come from the hard place. Yeah, and, and I find to like to have the real the real story to back you. Yeah. It's almost like there's a template now yeah. that, that people fit themselves in. But, like, but like, nowadays, a genre like, is somewhat like, a template. Like, lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. But nowadays, like, it is, it's, 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 maybe that's it. Maybe genres are templates. But, but yeah. some artists, you know, it, try to it, sort it's of make festivals, it's industry, it's culture. And like, if people can make a sound that everyone gets down to and you can make money of it, yeah, fucking it, you don't have to have the story anymore. It's yeah. just that that's how it was born, that's how the culture was born. But you know, these days, at, the, be, at the same you know, time, like, I think true struggle really comes out with creative geniuses, like people who have just been handed shit their whole lives and, you know, just fucking come out like, you know, free fucking, their parents invest heaps of money and they get free concerts and they don't have to struggle and they don't have to strive to like put passion into what they're doing to succeed, won't actually get the full way that like, just yeah. I think just think about any that's any major. Like that in life in general, like that's just like if you have everything handed to you, you're not going to have the real story to tell. Yeah, hundred percent. A good that's example. Not come through on your heart. A good example of that actually, I think, is a beachy. Like he was he was a big EDM artist that really broke through with a different style. That really like that was when EDM and electro was sort of coming through into the mainstream, like coming onto the radio more. And he, he when, when you say EDM, what what do you mean? Electronic dance music. Oh, uh, in the. Uh, and electro, isn't electro electronic dance music too? Yeah. So, like, I, I mean, EDM is like a whole, like anything electronic yeah, sounding, yeah, 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 like, yeah, really yeah, beyond yeah. beyond like you know the old school drum and bass and stuff. But yeah. more like, like EDM, I think is like a, a whole genre is pretty much encompassing electronic dance music that's mm. like you know one ten to one forty BPM of like progressive yes, beats, yeah. four four beats. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. So like that, as that was sort of breaking through, like he he made fucking like incredible sounding shit that was like unique and different and really like pushed yeah made it like quite big and he was fucking huge and he was tortured like he was a fucked up individual he died at like what 24 25 i'm yeah. not familiar yeah. with that with yeah well he's he's like one of the original not original but like one of the like people who's no he's like electro house sort of stuff like it was back when like Skrillex and Bloody Beatrice and What's those guys were sort of coming through it's it was like, like 2008 no, yeah yeah it was like no, after no. sort of dead mouse's Okay, guys, we are back uh, from uh, so Solar Professor Music Progress Bullshit That's Podcast, like Episode Three, Special Edition, uh, Special Warehouse Edition. Special uh, Warehouse. Uh, we've had some interesting discussions earlier. Uh, I think the, the, the rain is starting. 
One of the Maybe things now we talked about was hip hop, sort of. Uh, we touched on hip hop. Uh, so, what about progressive hip hop? <laughs> <laughs> what about? <laughs> what about? <laughs> Always got to get a call back. To well, the I think it's a. Uh, I feel like you really committed to the name of this podcast. <laughs> I well, the, the I think what I think is that the music does not deserve the name. Prog. <laughs> on, on the episode, it's, well, it's and do, do you think it's progressively gotten less worthy? You know, I, I just less did a, worthy of the name. Yes, I think yeah. so. <laughs> These I think days, so. like I think so. It, you're you know, right. Like in the beginning, it was like right. yeah, that's yeah. kind of progressive. Yeah, I can get yeah. Get yeah. Like, These days, yeah. less things have progressed. Yeah. I'll give you another example. Like, minimal, the foot. Min, minimal, <laughs> minimal techno. Minimal. Uh, oh my god, it's fucking. Started. Same days, it's not minimal anymore. I, I once saw a set of minimal down tempo at Freaks of Nature, and it sounded like the fucking rain on this warehouse. It was literally like water droplets <laughs> for about thirty minutes. <laughs> really? Awesome. Damn. That yeah, it's, minimal it's down you're tempo. Sleeping, but like, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Uh, yeah. Minimal. Yeah. It's like almost me putting the microphone out there and uh, yeah, exactly. recording and then playing it at a. At a, at a, at a, at a oops, but yeah, is there a progressive hip hop? Uh, or what would be that, you know? Uh, of course. <laughs> I feel like hip hop's you know? supposed to be in your face. It's not it's not gonna be progressive, it's gonna but, be like fucking blaring horns and R and B air horn and shit. You were saying about this new genre sort of hip hop, you know, coming out and yeah, deep it's fucking garbage. Isn't maybe that that's progressive maybe. I don't know. I hope that's like shit ass. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and I just said making think... it progressive doesn't make it any better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you could just like make your it music. It sounds like for you, hip hop has gotten progressively shitter. To be, I've only gotten so in into hip hop the yeah, last few years. Pop, yeah. Like, I never liked it when I was younger. I've only gotten into it more recently and yeah. older stuff. But yeah, uh, I've been liking it for a while. I, I'm gonna actually hope, hoping to start making some uh, or oh, rapping. Uh, I was hesitant to do it before. I wanted to like make my own beats and then rap to them, but never got into you know different careers. So, yeah. We're gonna set up a music studio here soon. That's so that's cool. Make some beats. Christina. <laughs> yeah. Come and do some raps. Uh, by the way, what I, I just did a post on uh, uh, Facebook, uh, and I, I just took a shot of this table uh, and I commented. Uh, Prog is bullshit isn't prog and rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I think like uh, we discussed like uh, interesting um, possibilities of uh, what prog is. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think we've, uh, I'm not satisfied with this. I think this, well, and this is, this is the, the why I decided to call this podcast this because uh, I just, want to keep talking about this topic to different people like JJ said yeah I think they like it might have meant something before do but think, is do you think that if prog is bullshit and that's what this podcast is about that this podcast is just about talking shit uh no because we touch on other topics so well, this is like, there is a segment <laughs> of it yeah well yeah we're talking shit now. <laughs> 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 but uh there are uh, yeah there are, there are segments uh, to, to the podcast uh, do you do you see this running for multiple seasons or are you going to do a different one like house is bullshit no uh no 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 I prog. I just prog is the only thing that keeps him up. I just that. think that's the, the terminology. I have for. my beef is not with the music; it's with, it's with terminology. Pro, okay. progressive. Well, how about doesn't... grammar is bullshit? Grammar. Yeah. What do you mean grammar? Like language. Semantic yeah. grammar. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like English. Uh, uh, oh, English. Well, yeah, what, what do you think about English? What about the, is what about English bullshit? bullshit? I mean, a lot of people are calling it doof, but it's not really doof. But what is doof? <laughs> I my understanding of doof is that it's you know something pumping music right Bush but some pumping music but some people the, it, yeah it's don't matter pay yeah it's like the word by itself but yeah like i guess it's just meant to party yeah party. but some people apparently don't even go to do for music you know, they go for other things the house I know, of people that go to <laughs> fucking just snort powders and watch a tree so yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> exactly <laughs> i guess uh but buy tickets now 
No, I'm, I'm just saying that the term progressive when it comes to music is just kind of meaningless. <clears throat> I don't, I don't disagree. Frog is I don't disagree. It is, yeah, I mean. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of close. I think like with a lot of what we do, is the more you invest in like your artistic self, we do it through like our visual production and so on and so forth, you open up more avenues to go down. And I think that that's what's happening with music, is people find their own little niches and it just keeps evolving. I think prog is just this really umbrella term that I think is just being thrown on a lot of different kinds of music, which is just a way to just keep evolving the same sound and then just like trying to develop and grow new ideas. Yeah. What about, like, what, do you take issue to the word core in genres? You know, like hardcore, breakcore, Slam core, chill core. Um, I think it's exact same. I, I think I don't understand. You don't understand, don't understand, understand that. Do you despise the concept of it? No, no, no. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, he, he seems but to despise the frog. I just, I'm trying to Do find like which level. Maybe, maybe that's going to be the same. No, I don't despise I just, the concept. I actually, I've always wanted to invent the genre chill core. I thought it would be really cool. Were you surprised when you listened to it? Psycho, that it wasn't as psycho as you thought it might be. <laughs> Maybe uh, there is similar issue with core, like there is with prog. I just don't. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to think future for you. If you, if you ever want to branch out and like, I don't know, maybe get Joe Rogan on the side to do like, core is bullshit for you, and you know, you could be like Joe sure, Rogan. Yeah, yeah, what's, what's the connection, Joe Rogan and the core? Uh, I'm just thinking in terms of podcasts, like. You, you keep progressing, Joe Rogan's going to be under your Pro umbrella. Uh, I keep progressing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, look, I, it's, I don't know where it's going to take me, you know. We'll, we'll, I think you we'll should take it. offense to core. Um, I think you should. Well, well, once I, I well, let me deal well, with this prog I first. Feel like, I feel <laughs> like if you have, I feel like, I just feel like if, if you have an offense to prog, you should definitely be pissed off about core. Well, I feel like it's going to be a bit of a deal with prog first. Prog? <laughs> no. Maybe he's like really No, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to find what, the, what the level like ground is here. Like, if what core is what like the hating? hard hitting, like, oh, this... you know, if progressive's like, no, we're going to take it easy, hardcore's like, no, we're hardcore. Yeah, no, I, I, think guess, I guess I it, I guess it is, but again, I think it's just Tambor. What's the opposite of prog? The opposite of prog? I reckon, like, big house. Big, yeah, big room, that sort of shit. Big like room, st stuff that like builds up to a fat drop and then yeah. drops See, I don't and then goes that, backwards the is other that, way. Is big that room. your thing? No, I don't think that's that. So so if frog is bullshit, is like full on your thing? No. My thing is minimal. Minimal's you were just like, ragging on minimal. <laughs> Min minimal is <laughs> no. like below frog. It, it is like. Minimal is like when you. like. I just think of minimal as like lazy if anything for well, music it's thing. like okay i started this track i might as well just fucking release it who cares uh, well the thing so is underdeveloped <laughs> let it all just go out the genre the that's mini, called minimal mini, techno yeah, there we go, yeah. that's done. doesn't mean i it, it has evolved so like i don't agree that minimal i mean as i'm saying minimal does not do it justice because it has evolved so much and it's become like would you say it's maximal no, um, it's not maximal, but it's, it's, it's more complicated than minimal, like in my <laughs> understanding. So, like, I haven't listened to minimal techno, or I didn't like minimal techno when it was first, like, evolving, like, back in, let's say, 15 years. And then when someone said, here, this is that minimal techno that put me, like, some cool track of Boris Brescher, or even a later, some, some later producers, I was like, is this minimal, really? Is this there's a lot of stuff going on in it. Like, well, then it's not minimal, is it? Well, it's not. No, it's not. Like, I wouldn't say Boris But the, so that just sounds like exactly what this podcast is about. Like, it's, it's a genre weird. that's been named and then adapted beyond that. It's sort of like, I don't know, blues. I guess like blues started out as because of the blues, like sad, lonely tunes, and then fucking you know, like twelve bar beats and stuff like that is actually minimal quite upbeat, out but they're still called the blues. Producers. Exactly, minimal started because people are just fucking. Minimal honestly would have started just because of Germany. 
Like, I reckon they're just like, yeah, this is good. I, I drop this. They have enough MD to like. It. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I tell you what, that's, that record was on the skate oh for like God. 10 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, and by the way, I'll, dro I'll like drop that. one too. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think that's too harsh. Uh, that, that, well, Apologies like, to Germany. Uh, <laughs> I know historically they they've been very no peaceful people. But like some people say, well, like this, the, uh, Detroit is like apparently the, the, the birth of like minimal techno. Um, I think Detroit's the birth of yeah techno, and then Boston was if, house, was it? If, if if you watch the the documentaries, there was actually the the, the house music genre. Um, sort of emerged in two places at the same time and it was unconnected. It was in, in Germany and and in America. Ooh. They both kind of, the, 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 the sound was born independently. Um, and yeah. the same man yeah. had yeah. come up. Yeah. Um, that it was pretty unconnected, yeah, if you watch the documentaries. That's cool. Awesome. I guess it, it would have just been as well because of the primitive synthesis they had back then. Well, it in, would have been like Ger very in basic. In Germany, the movement was because of, um, there was like a huge resurgence of people that just had gotten sort of their freedom rights or something. I don't really know that much about history and stuff, but in Germany, like, they had that, like, the German... <laughs> you always want somebody who doesn't Germans, know much about history that, talking about Germany. That, that, that the German summer of love or whatever, and that's where techno was, like, and house music was born in, in Germany. But in America, it was different. It has a whole different yeah. history, you know, like, how it came up. But like on this podcast, like yeah, what I would like primarily to talk about is yeah, music and how it changes and how people like perceive different genres because sometimes it's like there is confusion, like what, and that there are so many you know, like genres and subgenres that I I don't understand and don't know. So I think uh, yeah. Have you ever listened to Paul McCartney's electronic music? No. You should listen to that. It's interesting. It's very interesting. When he's uh, been, he's when like was a beat. Uh, like he's made like independent electronic stuff in like 95 till now he still makes stuff but like he was heavily into like digital synthesis and analog synthesis like when it was first emerging never released like he released like smaller singles and stuff but nothing huge and he's got tracks with like bloody beetroots and like a few other yeah, big, yeah, yeah. big uh, uh, like artists nowadays like he's I take on it is like <clears throat> you can have experimental electronic and that's if you don't kind of sit into any of the key foundations that you need to uh, sit in to be one of the other genres. If you want to be drum and bass or you want to be side trance, you have to sit in with a certain boundary of... Yeah, yeah for sure. Of, yeah, I definitely of, agree with of that. Of like BPM, mm -hmm. of sound, yeah. synthesis. Once you sort of hit in within that boundary, then you've got like your choice of sort of having it, your dark or your full on or your cheesy yeah. or your progressive or whatever you might you feel that emotion the way you want to portray it in that genre you can sort of choose and hone in and that will click into sort of like a sub category yeah um but really you know that's just you like it and you, you don't want to sort of put your name on any of those if you're a producer yeah you just want to have your own yes. sound yeah. yeah and you want to be able to shape that and you know depending on what genre you choose like you've always got that flow of you know, that's that's how artists have their, their different sounds, you know, but that's what's great about those music, you know, otherwise it wouldn't be boring if it was too refined, but yeah. there's, there's a lot of freedom once you sort of, and that's like that in any art, like, you know, with graffiti or something, you can kind of learn the style, once you sort of know the foundations of the art, then you can really push the boundaries and go, alright, I'm going to break through here a bit, but then I come back, so yes. you can see that is that. You know, because if you can't see that, then it goes into this experimental. No, that's not graffiti. That's abstract art. Yeah. yeah. What, what are you talking about? You know, it's the same with electronic music. Like. Yeah, I find that with breaking through with things, it needs society needs slow progression. Like, mm. I, I think there's a lot of great artists that are like so far beyond what society's ready for that they can't actually appreciate it at yeah. the time. And you know, you hear it 20 years later back. or something, and you're like wow, this was actually genius, but yeah. people aren't ready because they need baby steps to appreciate things. And it's the same thing we were talking about, language of cinema and film and stuff like that. Like that takes time to adapt and like evoke into, into people's psyche. And people like, like that repetition, that, that 
that's like a science thing like yeah it's that's got a, to do with your, your your memory and the way you access emotions and yeah they want repetition yeah. but you also want to be shocked you want something different that shocks you but also draws you in that's the hardest thing to find the balance with is like how to shock somebody with something that's out there and different and catchy but also fits within the same niche mm. But you know, like yeah, there there are probably in music is such a like topic. There are so many words that can mean different things. Like psychedelic, uh, that that's another one. Also, like it's it's chuck some reverb on it. She'll be right. Yeah. Yeah, that's good enough for them. They've had enough of me. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, the, the, guys, what about your your activities in music, like um, uh, in terms of design, like stage designs and, and all that? Any sort of projects currently happening? Tyler, with, with you and uh, any any? Yeah. Um, I'm working on a VR video game at the moment. That we're working with an artist from Greece called Arrestus. Um, doing, he's creating like soundtracks and also sound effects to play throughout the game. So that's something we're like implementing into that, which will hopefully be released. It was supposed to be end of the year, but it's been pushed back because we've had a lot of projects. So it'll probably be like March or April, realistically, in like beta. Um, so yeah, anyone with a VR headset can definitely get the size. What kind of game is it? Um, it's like a horror strategy game. So it's multiplayer online. Um, it's basically anywhere from like. 4v1 up to like 6v1 but there's one player called the entity and the other players that are the civilians and basically they, the civilians start and they're in like different scenes like a haunted house or a graveyard and stuff and they have to try and find out what the entity is that's in the house and the entity has to sneak around and identify who they are and hunt them one by one right. and the idea is for the civilians to survive until the end so it's like using a lot of the newer game engine features like dynamic lighting and sound effects that are audio um sorry spatial sound effects and stuff like that so you know proximity based yeah proximity audio. based and because it's all vr like you have to physically walk around and like open mm. a door and that creates a creaking sound which then the entity can hear from the other side of the house and will try to track you down right and so the entity is it one of the people yeah. playing yeah. also yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so it's sort of it's it's um, it's similar to Among Us in that way, where it's like one person who is randomly selected to be yeah. the killer yeah. and yeah. everyone else has to yeah. sort of work together against yeah. them. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and there's obviously disadvantages to being the entity and vice versa. Yes. They have powers and the yeah. civilians don't because of the numbers and it's, it needs to be quite balanced. But um, that's cool. yeah, that's that's taking into account like a lot of sound because it's VR and it's a, you can use spatial audio for that sort of thing. A lot of it is going to be sound based, so having to listen out for sounds to get away from them. Oh, and, that's cool. Yeah. How long have you been working on that? I haven't really worked on it at all the last two months because I've been too busy, but before that was probably about four months or so I've been working on it. Four months? So in four months you built the computer game? It's not finished yet. It's nearly a beta test mode now. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, pretty much you know, modelled everything, modelled all the characters from scratch, re-animated all the characters from scratch. Um, did all the server work. Every, everything in the game is actually entirely from scratch, like built amazing. from the ground up. So it was it was a lot of work, but it's it actually looks fucking amazing. And um, yeah, it runs like ridiculously efficiently. Because luckily, when we were um, we were doing game development um, for another company, we were just doing optimization, and their art team is a fucking nightmare. And so we were just having to fix fuck ups all day long. So I have learned everything not to do based from them entirely. Yeah, yeah, so it was good yeah. being able to start a project and be like, all right, well, this is definitely what we're not doing and this is how we're going to go ahead it. And it's just, yeah, it's run super smoothly. So once the next Unreal Engine um, releases and we update it to that, which should hopefully be around the release date, then it'll have a lot more visual dynamic features. Like um, that's got stuff like global illumination and stuff, which is, um, it's the sort of thing where like, you know how like if a light shines in a certain area, it up, it also illuminates the room around it, but you see the beam of light like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, game yeah. engines traditionally don't do that. They'll, if you have a light source, it will illuminate where the light source is hitting, but it won't illuminate the room around right. it because it's heavy calculations. But refraction. This, yeah, yeah, refraction. It's uh, yeah, pretty much just like indirect lighting in a sense. Um, but yeah, they've, they've 
crack the code on that sort of stuff. So once that's released, hopefully we can upgrade it and make it look quite realistic looking. That's cool. Well, what, what's really the name of the game again? Um, at the moment it's called Entity VR, but we're, yeah. we're still working on all of the fine detail and stuff. Um, Storyline and stuff still needs that's to be cool. fine-tuned a bit. Um, but yeah, it's all it's all near completion. It's, it's yeah. So it's pretty much... in to like a lot of really popular tropes have happening in the gaming scene as well. Yeah. Like VR, being able to go into a game, you have so much yeah. more depth of yeah. what you can do. And like the player versus player aspect and like the teamwork, it's just like all the rage right now because it gets yeah. you really involved and 100%. Um, invested in the experience. Like even if it lasts five minutes, each five minutes is just, just as Riveting. So how long is the last in, in your so game? Like how long would the round? The They're about 15 <laughs> minutes for the stand game mode. So <laughs> at, the moment, <laughs> at the moment, we're just Time releasing a beta time. mode that's going to be um, like 15 minute games, yeah. just like you know, basic yeah. basic game modes. And then after that, we'll probably develop it to have a bit more um, throughout it. But at this stage, yeah, just keeping it basic for the beta. Um, but yeah, like I. I one of the biggest aspects that I found engaging was that like I was I was trying a whole bunch of different VR games and I tried this one called Phasmophobia, which is like a, a ghost hunting game in a house. And it's like sick, it's like super dark and like you're in a house and you have to turn on all the lights manually Very and cool. like use a flashlight. Very light. atmospheric. So, yeah, really dark and atmospheric, but the gameplay just fucking sucked. Like you, the game is literally like you walk into a room and you like find a piece of goo and then you're like, oh, it's a ghost and then you leave and that's it. Like that's literally how you win. And I was just like, this, this has such potential to be a sick game, but it just sucks ass to play. And I was like, <laughs> I went into the game having a vision of what it was, and it was not even close to that. And I was like, right, well, I want to make the game that I envisioned that game to be, because it's yeah, entirely yeah, different. It's just a yeah. horror game. So really. did it become what you envisioned? To yeah, it's working. Yeah. It's working yeah. quite well. It took a long time because it's hard to find the balance between darkness and dynamic lighting in VR. Because VR has like, when you're wearing a VR headset, it's overexposed as opposed to a normal monitor. So it's got a higher, higher light to it essentially. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to find the balance between when it's dark in the scene and you can still see a little bit and when it's light from all the light sources and it's not too bright and with your flashlight as well. Because it's the sort of thing you have to pick up a flashlight and walk around and find the light switches and stuff. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's got potential. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I th I, I'm it's a, potential I'm, for you to make a whole yeah, well, it's pretty much done. Like the networking and online mode is all working. They're pretty much the only things left to get the beta mode done is modeling one of the entities, rigging it up, and then implementing gameplay mechanics to it, which are all already mapped out. So it's it's pretty much there. Uh, yeah, I'm, awesome. I'm pretty confident it's going to be fucking pretty good. It's had a lot of a lot of work put into it. Yeah, shit, yeah. And I just want to say another shout out to Poncho Fox uh, for thank you for thank you, uh, Poncho. yeah, we really enjoying this. This gin and guys, once again, cheers on cheers. the completion of the project. Yeah. I'm, I'm cheers, gonna, I'm gonna show, um, you know, the, I have some footage of the, the, uh, the little stage and uh, the. the um, is there an action shot? Until it's released. <laughs> no, oh no, this is not. Embargoes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> NDA lock. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's got. You want to sign something on the way out, actually. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go home now and, and, uh, all night. Uh, like anything, you know, the podcast. Just, just be, just just be careful of that black home. Mazda parked out the front of yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm. well, I was going to take some time. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, aiming for January to be released. So, episode two is coming oh, okay. out in December. Uh, this one in January, I'm gonna do them once a month, so yeah. Sweet. Well, it's probably gonna be too late for all the people to see the <laughs> installation by then, then anyway. So oh, well, they will, now, they will see it. They you would have had fun uh, if you had been there sooner. No, just, uh, you know, so. We have had fun now. Yeah, uh, well, I think, we I think, we, I think we, maybe we, uh, we've been going uh, for we one done? hour and 11 minutes. I yeah. think we've had that's, some good discussions. So, yeah. any, uh, any more, you gotta talk to my age. I just wanna thank you guys for. You know, joining the podcast, uh, it's an exciting setup, uh, and yeah. Thanks, I, I had a blast. I can't wait for core is bullshit. It's gonna, it's gonna be epic. Um, well, I, I think I just even if we discuss core and how bullshit it is, I can think I can keep the name progress bullshit too. Uh, yeah, sure, up to you. Yeah. As long yeah. as there's gin, I'm season. fucking happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, once again, thanks, guys. Uh, 
It was great. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank uh, you. Pleasure. Uh, and thank you to Poncho Fox, yes. the, the most delicious beverage ever. Please purchase it. Yes, and uh, uh, thank you. For, feel free to send Mason bottles as well. For those who are listening, yeah. and uh, uh, thank you to those who are watching. Uh, so stay tuned. All the best. Peace, Peace. love, progressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Frog is